Hello and welcome to this video on SNRIs. This video is a part of our series on psychiatric pharmacology. So if you want, you can check that out. So in this video, we're going to talk about the mechanism of action, the drug of choice, meaning the condition in which SNRIs are the drug of choice, contraindication, adverse effects, and then serotonin syndrome. What's the mechanism of action? Well, if you've seen my video on SSRIs, you'll know that SSRIs inhibit the reuptake of serotonin in particular. Well, SNRIs has S as well as N, meaning it inhibits the reuptake of both serotonin and epinephrine, uh, norepinephrine, pardon me. Serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. Serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. So, where does this reuptake occur that we're talking about? It occurs in the synaptic cleft. What is a synaptic cleft? Synaptic cleft is the area between the exon, between the exon of one neuron and the dendrite of another. This space that you see in between, that is the synaptic cleft. This is the norepinephrine reuptake in, uh, transporter. This NET is norepinephrine transporter, right? And this controls, this arrow here indicates that this is the reuptake of norepinephrine. This is the exon of one, and this is the dendrite of another. This is the 5-HT3, meaning uh, serotonin reuptake transporter. You inhibit both of these in SNRIs. So you increase the levels of not only norepinephrine, but also serotonin in the synaptic cleft. And these are the neurotransmitters that have been associated with depression so there's depression and other psychiatric conditions in which there's a neurotransmitter imbalance you increase their level in the synaptic cleft now let's talk about the clinical use meaning the uh, meaning the conditions in which these drugs are indicated basically a uh, major depressive disorder this is the second line drug it's a second line drug in that it's also indicated for generalized anxiety disorder neuropathic pain fibromyalgia and then venlafaxine only venlafaxine only is indicated for social anxiety disorders ocd ptsd uh, ocd is obsessive compulsive disorder ptsd is post traumatic stress disorder and then panic disorder duloxetine i need you to remember duloxetine in particular is an snri because in my video on ssris i talk how, how, I talk about how these drugs have teen in their end like peroxetine and fluxetine yet these are SSRIs so how are you going to remember this is the duloxetine is an SNRI the rest are SSRIs and then the rest of the SNRIs which you will usually have in an exam is the vaccine mnemonic the vaccine mnemonic does when the vaccine mnemonic that's pretty much it now let's talk about the adverse effects of SNRIs they increase the blood pressure. This is something that you need to know that blood pressure regulation is important for SNRIs and uh, blood pressure should be well controlled before prescribing SNRIs. Something else particular to them is insomnia and nightmares, increased cholesterol and triglycerides. How I remember uh, SNRIs and nightmare is nightmare has an N and SNRI has an N. Cholesterol and triglyceride weight gain is something that has been linked to both SSRIs and SNRIs. So it has a side effect profile which is somehow similar to SSRIs, which includes GI distress, nausea, vomiting, sexual dysfunction, and then weight gain. Serotonin syndrome. We need to talk about serotonin syndrome for just a bit because that's an important uh, complication of the using of SNRIs and SSRIs on all of these serotonergic medications. So serotonergic medication including SSRIs, SNRIs, tricyclic antidepressants. So some drugs such as linezolid which is an antibiotic and uh, mayo, uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors which are usually now prescribed only for atypical or extreme cases of resistant depression. 
and then MDA, which is a drug commonly abused. These are the drugs which are implicated in serotonin syndrome. So either they are used by themselves in large amounts or they're used together. So a patient who was on uh, sertraline or a patient who was on venlafaxine is said now prescribed by sertraline and the concomitant use of both of these drugs together is usually the cause of serotonin syndrome. Intentional overdose, we know that these patients are depressed there might be suicidal ideation and if they somehow know that this is a drug and in, in its overdose can cause serotonin syndrome or they just want to uh, do suicide so intentional overdose is also possible for serotonin syndrome you need to remember three things dysautonomia meaning hypertension tachycardia diaphoresis due to increased activity of the sympathetic nervous system mental status changes confusion delirium these neurotransmitters are usually present in the brain their activity their activity has been highly increased you'll obviously have confusion and delirium and then neuromuscular hyperactivity mental status changes then dysautonomia and neuromuscular hyper hyperactivity these are the three things that you need to remember neuromuscular hyperactivity particularly tremor clonus and hyperreflexia. Now, how do you differentiate this serotonin syndrome from, uh, let's say, NMS, which is neuroleptic malignant syndrome or malignant hyperthermia is what I talk about in detail in my video on serotonin syndrome. If you want, you can check that out. What's the antidote for this? It's ciproheptadine. Summary. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter so is norepinephrine its levels are increased both of these are levels are increased by snris snri inhibit the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine adverse effects include sexual dysfunction and weight gain which are also shared by ssris other side effects include increased bp you need to take control of your bp before prescribing snris others include nightmare and insomnia S lastly, serotonin syndrome is something that you need to be careful of. That's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please uh, go to my channel, subscribe and watch my playlist on psychiatric pharmacology for other videos. Thank you so much.